all the doing. Amen. In Greek, all is all. Amen. Amen. You don't need another interpretation. It's all inclusive. Everybody. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's the word that they call a collective consciousness. You look it up, it's a magnanimous word. Yes. A magnanimous word. I said it, I've been saying it for a few months. And I know you, I got some other folks in here that went back to check it out, but it's a very powerful term. And I'm going to talk about it here and, and what it entails because it's all in scriptures. Nimrod had a collective consciousness. It's all through scriptures. We got to get that collective consciousness where we can have the same mind, the same judgment. You hear what I'm saying? And it's not a cult to think the same. I'm not looking for uniformity. We'll talk about that too. Right? The folks, folks, they, we we trying to make it like Nimrod's movement. Now you do know Nimrod had he had bricks, he didn't have stones. Come on. You know bricks look alike; mm -hmm. they shape alike. Mm -hmm. Stones are not. Stones are different shapes, mm -hmm. colors. Mm -hmm. So I, I I don't I'm not offended by diversity mm -hmm. or uniqueness. We try to make room for people being unique, mm -hmm. unusual. Different, but as long as it don't encroach upon us corporately, so sometimes your uniqueness can spill over. Amen. I'm gonna help you how to get rid of that spillage. <laughs> oh, no, that's a word. Or oh, overage. That's a word. Amen. <laughs> help you get deal with it because sometimes we mismanage so many areas of our life and we've done it so long. Yeah. Nobody yeah. can tell us because every time somebody tells us, we cut the relationship off. Shots fired. <laughs> Shots fired. Who knows? All the building, fitly framed together, grows unto what? A holy temple of the Lord. So this strangers and foreigners who no longer had that old identity have been brought into the household of faith. And all of a sudden, they have government and order and structure with apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ is himself as the chief cornerstone, which yes. means he put the seal on the whole building, right? Yes. All of a sudden, they fit, they frame together, they grow. Yes. When they have respect for the apostles and prophets, when they have respect for the chief Hallelujah. cornerstone, when they understand they're no longer strangers, they're no longer foreigners, they're no longer alienated from the life of God, they're no longer on the outside, Look at it. Yes, 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 yes. Y'all getting this? Yes, yes. And I know sometimes you join the church, you're going to be on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. But if you've been here five years, mm -hmm. three years, two years, there's no way you should be looking from the outside in. Mm -hmm. You should be a part of us. Let us build together, right? It should be a corporate spirit, a corporate sound. I like this, man. Then let's go to Ephesians 4. Because there's two places that has this word fitly framed. Before I give you the etymology, I still got a whole lot of time. A whole lot of time. A whole lot of time. And we only do enough steam like a good choo-choo train. Can you hear it? Oh, Ephesians 4, 11, y'all too stuck up. <laughs> 11, verse 11. Verse 11. I like to make jokes and I, I can preach and teach yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know, get prophetic words and all that good stuff. It's not boring. Uh, okay, verse 11. And he gave some. Somebody say some. Uh, yeah, he can give all. I don't care what's going on Instagram, social media is across the globe. My, no, you know, my space. Uh, uh, Facebook. <laughs> And all that other stuff that's going on in the clubhouse, the podcast, WhatsApp, Twitter. Yeah, Twitter too. I like Twitter. When I want to laugh, I go to Twitter. Anyway, my, my wife can tell you, I'll be downstairs at like 12 o'clock. And I, I just go through there. Just, when I want to do laugh, I ain't had a good laugh in a while, I just go to Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> they don't knock my dare me. It ain't a mouth, so I have to go to Twitter. Just Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's that. It's mostly natural. Just, just watching somebody else responding to somebody else and be like, <laughs> Boy, you got to be kidding. The way folks come up with words and get the, you know, interject it. Okay. 
And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, mm -hmm. and teachers. Some, not all, just some. Right? Mm -hmm. I believe it's some. I, I don't believe that every person that has called himself an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, actually apostle, prophet, pastor. Amen. You know, there's a lot of a lot of factors in it. I told you guys a long time ago, any if you can't to have a lady. That's good. There's no good when it's empty. That's true. Somebody get that in. Uh, verse 12. For the perfected of the saints. For what? For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. So the body don't get edified because you got five folk ministry. How the body get edified? The function of what? The saints, the church. That's how the church grows. When the saints are mature, perfected in their faith, and doing the work of the ministry, as a byproduct of that, what's going to happen? The church get builds up. Okodomo. It grows. It gets strong. Most of us wait on good preaching, teaching, good worship. On the gifts, you know, something like that. But it's, it's saying that what's being released out of the pulpit mm -hmm. has found a place in the body. Yeah. Yeah. And when it finds a place in the body, mm -hmm. there's work that happens. Yeah. Amen. Hello. Listen, when I or anybody get up here talking about through a message and experience that belongs to us as a unit, as a collective body, what happens is what? <clears throat> there is no work of the ministry. Yeah. <clears throat> See, we have a lot of people in churches that are unemployed. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't know what their work is or their ministry is. They, they're not working their ministry. Yeah. Because we sold the bill of sale as being up here is the work of the ministry. <laughs> where he has sown you, where you are planted is the work of the ministry. You come to get trained here. Right. I was telling, um, I always run into, uh, what do you call them people? Latter day Saints Mormons. I love them. <laughs> I love them. Every time I go to McDonald's getting my grandson something, I run into them. They got the little thing on them, and they all dressed up, you know. Amen. And they just look mammal. <laughs> and I'm looking at them, I'm like, and I know them when I see them because you guys are Latter day Saints. <laughs> Yes, sir. They get lit up. Yes, sir. I can tell, man. And I told him I asked him about a certain guy. He said, "Yeah, I know him." I said, "Yeah, I talked to him on Facebook. I, I tried to get him to come on church." They said, "Really?" He said, "You a pastor?" I said, "Yeah, I pastor church." And we had a conversation. And I said, and I told him, I said, "Man, I envy y'all because y'all doing the work." Yeah. They're they're they're. Logistics is messed up. Their, their, their religious system is messed up. Their doctrine is off. But the effort is on. But they're doing the work of the ministry Amen. out there. Amen. You know the witnesses as well. I used to love them too. I talk to all branches. Amen. I do. I mean, I'm not offended. I'm like, hey, we may not agree, but there's some good things in all of them. Right, yeah.
faith and the knowledge of God, the intimate element of knowledge, not just the accumulation of facts. See, most of us just want to know who we know. No, no, no. Get to know who you know. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Spend some time with him whom the word is talking about. That's yeah. the knowledge that I'm talking about. This yeah. is what the intent of the knowledge of the Son of God. And then what happens? Unto a perfect man, a complete man, a mature man, unto the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. In other words, we increase our capacity to function as we come into knowledge, as we come into unity, and into the unity of the faith, then all of a sudden there's a perfect man that shows up. Is this too much, y'all? No. no. I, I watered it. So, this is so watered down from last week. I watered it down on purpose. <laughs> All right? So, it says that we, what? Henceforth be no more <clears throat> children, tossed to and fro. Uh -huh. Carried about with what? Every, Every wind of doctrine. How many know there's a lot of wind out there? Yes, last couple of days been windy. We don't talk about just winds of doctrine, yes. speculations, yes. philosophical views. Yes, Lord. Huh? The dragon has opened up his mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the book of Revelation said the dragon opened up his mouth. And that flood wants to take us all away. Flood of information. And we can't really sort through things as we should, right? By the slight of men and cutting crafters, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So there, there's people that want to take advantage of you through the teaching, right? That's why we have to make sure. That we come into the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Yeah. That means the unity of faith says, you know what? I can't have private interpretation. That's why God puts you in the body. Mm -hmm. So that you have to be a loose cannon or a long ranger. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes. How do you know if you're a long ranger or a loose cannon, you can't handle the word of God, skipper? 